Hello Makers, I'm Joe 3D Maker Noob. Remember that one time I said I have a lot of empty spools and I, well, did this to use them up? Well, I found something else I need to use. Ooh, candy. This is about a year and a half's worth of me subscribing to Rigid Ink Club, uh, MakerBox and other clubs and receiving samples and never actually getting to use them. And I found this box buried while I was organizing the space because I'm getting ready for the big move. And I thought to myself, I really need to use these up. Later, later. So my last video, I printed this spool drawer. This was a design I found on Thingiverse from an Italian designer. I only remixed it a little bit just to have like inserts where I can screw in the, well, screws. But I kind of said that I, I do want to fix this up a bit because, well, first of all, it's not completely round. Second, the center is like really offset. So I decided I want to design something. Now spool drawers have been done and redone a million times. And yes, I did another one. Now in my case, I have a lot of 750 gram spools and they all seem to be the same exact size. Unfortunately, the one kilo spools, so many different types. So I haven't designed anything for that yet. But what I did for the 750 gram spools is I went into Fusion 360 to get my hands a bit dirty. I started taking measurements of the inner diameter of the spool, the outer one, the height of the inner of the spool. I drew some circles, I drew some lines, I cut those lines, I trimmed them, I extruded them upwards, and then I did lots of fillets, I extruded some more, I put some handles, and I sent it off to print. The result was this, well, it looks almost the same. Uh, the difference is that this has three compartments, it fits very neatly, and also comes with these nifty little handles with notches. And these notches I use to grab a rubber band and simply just tie them together so they don't open up by themselves. Turned out really good because I also did fillets inside. So it's not like a sharp corner. So if you have little screws, you can simply just slide them up very easily. But then I looked at it and I thought, this is awesome. But what if I need like all the spool drawer space? What, what if I need just the three? What if I need more like five or six? And that got me thinking, what if I design a modular one with separators where you can mix and match and create your own size spool drawer. And in comes the other one. As you can see, this is multicolor because first of all, this re represents Malta, which that's white and red. And also because I started using samples. And the way this works is you have these little dividers here and you have the spool, see? There. Now, what you do is you simply grab the dividers and slide them into place according to the size of the drawer that you want because you might want like six of them or seven of them to have like little screws of each. Maybe you want to have one whole spool um, just to use for M3 nuts or M4 nuts or different size nuts. And I think it turned out really great. Now, there were a few things I want to take into consideration. So first, it had to print without supports, obviously, and it had to use the least amount of filament possible. So these take about, um, if I'm not wrong, about 15 to 20 meters of filament, depending on how you slice them. And most sample spools, and oh wait, hold on. I need to get rid of these. Where was I? Yes, most samples that you receive are either five meters or 10 meters. Now with five meters, there's not much you can do. Maybe you can print a benchy because that takes like three and a half meters of filament. So this will take between two to four um, um, rolls of sample filament for each drawer. And then I thought to myself, okay, I know everyone has like a large um, print volume. In comes the mini one. Yes, I also did one for to cater for those who have a small build volume. So this, can easily print on a printer, which has 120 by 120 only. Once again, it has the dividers. You can print the separators, uh, the dividers, I'm sorry. Um, you can print those separately and you can just slide them in to wherever you want. Now, as I said, I'm moving into a new space and I wanted to print a few of these. Um, I'm gonna to need to print a lot more because I have about 30 or 40 empty spools, which I need to, well, basically find a use for. So I printed more and some more. I do actually have more printing right now, but for now, these are it. So once I printed them, I said, okay, they look awesome. I can just, you know, stack them on top of each other. Nice and neat. But if I'm gonna have a lot stacked on each other and I'm gonna leave them in the corner, then if I want something in the bottom, I either have to, you know, take them all out and I don't know what is in which compartment. So, you know, it's just, well, it's just not convenient and practical. In come the rack system. 
So, I designed these as well in Fusion 360. And once again, as little filament as possible, just for them to be practical. In terms of looks, I just wanted to be colorful. So I used more samples that I had. Now the idea here that once again, this prints without support. So you print as many as you want, and then you just put them on top of each other. They should easily slide in. They have enough tolerance to counter for almost all printers, I'd say. And some more. Then once you're done, if you want to stop at the top, you just put it in top cover. Now the idea here is you simply grab the spools and just slide them inside, nice and neatly. And put another one, and you put another one. And you have a stacking system. And then when you want something, if you know that this contains all these screws, you simply take it out, you see what you need because you know, it's transparent and then you just pull it out and then take it back in. And you can simply just leave as many as you want next to each other, on top of each other. It's still sturdy enough. Um, it, I think it's the table that shakes more than this. This is possibly the best way I found to actually use the empty spools. Um, creates a nice organized space um, and a colorful one and it's fun. Now many of you have asked me about the filament change function. Now for these I only printed um, using printers which either have a run out filament sensor or um, have a very easy change filament function. So for these I use the Prusa i3 Mark III, JG Aurora A5 and also the Creative to CR10S, which all have a runout filament sensor. And for the ones that have the change filament feature, I use the uh, Prusa i3 Mark II S and also the FL Sun QQ, which you see right there in the corner. Really awesome printer, extremely quiet. I'll have a review out soon. For those that don't have a runout filament sensor um, or a change function feature, it can be a bit more complicated. I'll probably do a video of that, um, that later on. So in the meantime, yeah. My creation, I'm actually quite proud of this. It, it took me a while to design. I'm not that fluent in Fusion 360, but I actually learned a lot just by delving into it and experimenting with this design. So I'm, I'm really happy with the end result. I don't think it does require any further changes, but I do invite you to try it out. If you have some 750 gram spools, uh, I used ones from Printer Pro, Filamentum, Prima Select, uh, Philo Alpha. They all have the same size 750 gram spool. So if you do have a few, make sure you try it out. From my end, that is it. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will leave links to the, um, the Nobrak, Nobstack, the Nubi, Nubinator, Nubi Stackinator, the stacking, the, the Nobrak. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy stacking guys.